Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today's video is not going to be like the usual scenarios or other type of Ultimate Admiral content that I do. No, we're looking at the answers to the questions that you guys have submitted about a month ago in a different video. Now, these are the answers that the devs gave me. And uh, yes, it took them a while, but the answers are here. And now we can learn a bit more about the game. So I'm going to put on a battle in the background. It's just going to be full AI so that I can focus on the battle itself. Oh, sorry, on the, the questions and answers. So we're gonna throw together the uh, Hercules class Dreadnought, and this is what the AI has come up with. Right, lots and lots of interesting answers here. Um, I foresee that this is probably gonna be a pretty long video, and by the time, of course, that you're seeing this on YouTube, you can attest to whether that's true or not. While I'm going through the answers and the questions, I'll also be um, doing a bit of my own, <clears throat> let's say, feedback slash review on the answers as they were provided. Now, starting with a question section on... Let me tune down the audio from the game a bit before we start. Uh, master volume down to 37. Um... Will battleships and certain cruisers have scout planes that you can launch to spot the enemy quicker? Certain towers already have catapults and cranes modeled. The answer is, well, adding visual spotting planes to the game will require many more complex mechanics, like working out good flying physics that we currently consider a low priority. This will delay us from the campaign, so the most likely answer is no. There could be ways to recreate spotter planes as upgrades without coding them visually as an upgrade, for example. Now, I do um, find this an interesting question that was asked, like the spotter planes. I don't believe you can actually find them on the dreadnoughts that I happen to have here. But some planes can be seen on the towers of dreadnoughts, or at least you can see sort of um, launching rails for them. The devs seem to be very focused on getting the campaign out. And that means that everything else is taking uh, second fiddle to that. So everything else that's not immediately impacting the campaign, like spotter planes, are not a priority right now. Will there ever be multiplayer? Uh, there are no plans for multiplayer currently. We will come back to this question after the campaign is finished. So they said there, there aren't any plans, but they are saying that they will revisit it by the time that the campaign is done. So again, highly focused on the campaign. But it doesn't mean that there will never be multiplayer. Will it ever be possible to design the entire fleet that you're using, and in case of custom battles, design the enemy fleet as well? The answer is that custom battle functionality will receive some improvements over time, since it is a feature that players like and use very often. We will eventually allow the players to design the entire fleets, both for academy and custom battles within the budget. So, short answer, yes. Um, but it's going to take a while. Will there be maps with islands or terrain features? Now, their answer is that yes, there will be some of these, but there will be a sort of distant terrain, as they put it. Distant terrain will first appear in the campaign. Ships will not battle in the midst of dense islands in danger to run aground, because this rarely happened in the game's historical time frame. Now, good point. Um, for those of you who are coming from World of Warships, of course, it's a bit different. But then again, World of Warships, um, as much as Wargaming would like to claim that it's historical, uh, I would argue that it's, <laughs> it's really not. Or at least not that much. Next. When will quad turrets be implemented? This question keeps coming back every third or fourth video. Uh, when are they implementing these? Well, as soon as possible. It's a planned feature, so yes, they're working on it. Will there be a limitation to ships firing when they are severely listing to port or starboard? As it is now, ships can keep firing even when they are at very weird angles. Um, yes. Fortunately, yes. The whole gun aiming system is going to receive a big revamp very soon. And it says very soon in caps lock and bold. So it's going to be, well, very soon, I guess, but... That, of course, they have not pinned to any particular date. Um, the Apparently, the revamped in-gun aiming system is going to also fix this issue. That does not mean that it's already fixed as of right now, as tomorrow, uh, that'll be Friday. I have a video coming out where 
We can see some pretty unusual angles with firing angles from ships which are listing exceptionally poorly to port or starboard. What is the biggest gun caliber you are planning to implement? At the moment we have a hard limit of 18 inch guns, but we could offer higher caliber later since players ask for it. It is though a low priority. So once again they listen to player feedback and uh, the more we ask for 18 inch guns and particularly greater than 18 inch, the more likely it is to get implemented at some point. But again, I don't believe that it's going to quickly um, boost the campaign's chances of happening. So again, it is a lower priority. What is the largest hull slash displacement that you are planning to implement? At the moment, we do not consider adding ships bigger than the huge super battleships of up to 130,000 tons. But when we have the campaign, we will consider to expand further. Of course, within historically possible limits. Now, fair point. Um, with 130,000 tons, you can already do a lot of work. And I know that there are some of you who might want to see ships which go up to, I don't know, 200,000 tons, to name a crazy number. But that, apparently, as mentioned before, not a priority for the campaign, so not a priority as of right now. Will there be an anything goes mode, where you can have monitors fighting Yamatos? At the moment, you can use custom battle function to create any similar battle. For example, Yamato versus, uh, sorry, the Yamato of the 1940s versus early pre-dreadnoughts of the 1890s. The only ships currently missing from the possible technological levels are the small ironclads. It would not be too difficult to add them later, but it is a low priority. Once again, not really a feature that they are pursuing right now. And then the big one. Or, well, rather, one of the big ones. Will carriers be implemented? The current answer is no. But we will come back to this question once the campaign is finished. Um, so, again, it seems like the campaign is a big turning point for them. And they might consider adding carriers. Now, the question of will carriers get added also gets asked, I'd say, more often than the quad turrets. I'd say every two videos people are asking, oh, when are they going to add carriers and how do you think they should add carriers and do you want them to add carriers and what would AA look like? Um, I think adding carriers to this mix is going to disrupt the current balance that they have. It's going to be very difficult to implement carriers properly, I think. It's been tried by World of Warships uh, in several different iterations, but... None of those have proven to be too popular. Um, I'm not a big fan of the way that carriers are implemented in World of Warships at the moment. Of course, this is an entirely different game. And I imagine you couldn't control the planes directly if you were to have them in this game. Maybe more along the lines of if you tell the carrier what planes to use. Uh, maybe what angle to fly in from and what target to attack. I wouldn't really want it to be too arcadey. I mean, sure enough, this is not a simulator, nor is it trying to be one. And yes, you could argue that aircraft carriers are going to, or well, re require to be a part of this game. But keep in mind, the game time frame stops 1940. The aircraft carriers really came into their own, I'd say, a few years later. And towards the end of the war, 1945, 1944, you could really see that carriers just started to trump everything. And, well, it's Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. It's not Ultimate Admiral Aircraft Carriers. I would be interested to see how they plan on implementing this in the game, if they're going to revisit that decision. Um, at the moment, though, I don't miss not having aircraft carriers at my disposal. Next are going to be implemented. How will you implement NTR? Well, it's answered above, as they say, because they have already answered the question whether the CVs will be in the game. Um, if CVs are not in the game, then aircraft or NTR is not going to be an important issue either. The same goes for the question about dual-purpose guns that can serve as NTR and anti-ship, only applicable when and if they add aircraft carriers. Another important ship class. How are submarines going to be going to be implemented? Submarines are currently planned to be simulated abstractly in the campaign. So this is very important. The submarines will not 
be manually controlled by players. It's not like you can control this particular dreadnought and tell it to go left, right, torpedo that target, whatever. Submarines will be available in the technology tree and players will be able to build them. Okay, so you can build them, but you cannot actually control them. They're more of a strategic asset. Players will choose among a few strategy options on how submarines will operate versus the enemy. Each turn, um, that those two words are very interesting because it means that the campaign has turns. Each turns, sorry, each turn, submarines may participate in auto-resolved engagements and sink transports, damage warships, or even destroy them. Anti-submarine warfare technology, so ASW tech, destroyers and special equipment carried on your ships will be essential to counter the action of enemy submarines. So for example, a destroyer, um, you can already see that these things carry depth charges, or at least uh, sometimes you can see them on this, no actually, not on this particular ship, but some of them have them. Um, unless I'm completely mistaken, but whatever. Sometimes you can see depth charges. Those depth charges are not going to be used in the actual battle, like you see it played out right now, but more along the lines of a strategy map, where I imagine the game is going to run a sort of maybe RNG-based game where it says, okay, I have submarine with powers X, you have maybe light cruisers and destroyers with powers Y, and we're going to see just who rolls the highest and whether the torpedo actually strikes or maybe whether the submarine gets detected and killed off. That's how I am thinking that they might implement it. When can we expect submarines? It's a planned feature of the campaign. We cannot estimate the exact date of their arrival. This means, of course, that you'll not have them in custom battles, but again, um, they are going to be sort of turn-based weapons, strategic weapons, not weapons that you actually use in a battle. Are you planning on having more torpedo boat hulls? They currently end at 1906. Yes, this question relates to all types of new hulls. Yes, we will add as other hull types, but only after we have campaign and core features improved. We have a small team and we have to focus. So once again, very heavily focused on the campaign and getting that out there. And uh, a little later in this Q&A vid, you're going to find out why that campaign is so important. What are your plans for modular hulls? The ones you have currently, or the, the current ones, just have a slider for displacement. Their answer is, when we start improving hull systems, first we will address internal components, better detailed damage colliders, and deeper citadel slash armor belts. We're considering making hulls adjustable in beam, so the width of the ship, and draught, which is the height of the ship. The modular hulls could be a huge drain on performance due to more moving parts in battles and could only become possible once we solve the performance concerns. So it's um, a sh a sort of a, a yes but answer. Additionally, modular hulls affect the auto-design part, so we cannot confirm it yet until we are sure it is worth implementing. There are definitely bigger priorities like the campaign, crew and captains. Uh -huh. So there's going to be crew and captains to these things. Interesting. I wonder if you're going to have, for example, during the campaign, a ship that goes into battle uh, successfully, that the captain gains experience. Maybe they implement something like that. That'd be interesting. What are your plans for coastal defense ships like the Svetiga class or the um, Vainamoinen small and large plans to be added? Arguably, similar ships can already be created in the ship designer. So, coastal defense ships. According to the 3D ship assets we create in the future, we can make some modifications to them to be used in the design of such a coastal ship, but in a much later stage. Currently, we already have a basic variety to fully focus on the campaign. Once again, the focus on the campaign gets highlighted. What ship classes will have depth charges to deal with submarines? All classes that could carry them historically will be able to equip depth charge systems once they are researched by the player. Again, another uh, hint of what's going to happen in the campaign, which is research. I think we already had this more or less established, but it's just another confirmation that there will be research of tech trees in the campaign. And as they already have already hinted, if you research submarines and uh, if the enemy has submarines, you might want to get anti-submarine warfare. 
the depth charges and other ASW systems will automatically get added to your ships if you have them. Will any ship with a sonar slash hydro station be able to spot submarines? The sonar slash hydro system will increase the ASW rating of the ships, more so for destroyers. So a fleet that has ships with a high anti-submarine warfare rating or ASW rating will have more chances to spot and destroy enemy submarines in a campaign turn or evade their attack. That's another important thing. You might not always have to kill the submarine, but if you can just spot it and avoid it, then that is also a way of dealing with said submarine. More then. More about the campaign. How is the campaign planned to be? Is it going to be historical railroading or more player freedom? And this is something I really like. It's going to be full player freedom sandbox. It's the main core, of, core goal of the campaign. Each playthrough will be different. Alliances can go different. Technology research can lead to different results in each time frame, leading to different strategic conditions. Now, um, that is a lot of, uh, let's say, tech talk, but my interpretation of this is that technology research can lead to different results in each time frame. So let's say that in the campaign you start in maybe 1890, considering that that's the earliest tech tier that we have in the custom battles. If you go heavy on torpedo research there, and you focus on building a fleet that has a bunch of destroyers or maybe even torpedo boats early on, you could be a very potent coastal power. But maybe that means that you don't have as much power projection on the high seas. Maybe later on in the campaign you decide that you do want to have more of an expeditionary force of potentially cruisers, so you research that, and then in that time frame you become more of an expeditionary power. Now this is entirely theory crafting on my part, I could be entirely wrong about it, but this is more or less the way that I would expect to see something like that. Um, of course, if added, such a historical flow will be an option and not mandatory. So, as uh, a secondary part to their answer, if you want to, you might be able to set a historic timeline, maybe in the same sense as Hearts of Iron does it, the way that you can tick whether the AI will follow historical behavior or not. But it is optional, which I like. Um, will it be possible to refit ships after they've been constructed in the campaign? And the short answer to that is yes, you can. When is the game going to be released? And um, I added to that, I suppose they mean full release. Because the question that was asked on the uh, Q&A vid was not entirely clear. We are self-publishing the game, and thanks to player support and pre-orders are not pressured to rush the campaign. All of our supporters would prefer a campaign that is well done. When we accomplish this, we will release the game. I am very much in favor of this. Very, very much in favor of this. Too soon, or pushing a game out too soon, just leads to poor results. And we have seen this quite a few times with games. I don't have to name examples, but you can probably think of a few games that were just pushed out into either early access or even full release that were bug-ridden messes that maybe for the first year, first half year, you'd better not touch. And that usually leads to the demise of the player base of such a game. So I am very happy that they have the uh, early access that you can still get through their website, at least when I'm making this video on August 25, uh, 2020, by the way. Um, the guys are not rushing it. And I think that that is the right choice. Now, this means that the game might take more time to release. But if you want to get into the game earlier, you can still get it through their website. Will there be modding support? We come from modding roots, and of course we are considering it. Now, this is a really good thing to read. I really like that they are considering adding modding, because that can make the game last a hell of a lot longer. Will there be a way to incorporate some kind of Steam Workshop? For instance, for missions or fleets slash ships builds and all kinds of, or all other kind of those things. Um, yes, we are considering it, but it is a huge and very complex undertaking. 
And we will have to find the way to pay for it. But the potential benefits could be huge. We could create a system with rules and limitations where players can create hulls, parts, guns, turrets within certain time periods, which can be used in the game, allowing both the developer and user to greatly expand the range of models and ships. It could be done only after the full release, if the game is popular. Um, I agree with this somewhat. I'd say it's, a, it's almost a chicken and the egg situation. Because if you have mod support right from the get-go, and if you make it fairly easy for players to design and add new things through the Steam Workshop, then that could significantly increase the player base. It would also, for me as a content creator, be very interesting because I'd have a lot more to show you guys. I could do highlights of ships that people have built or highlights of particular scenarios that people have created. Maybe um, something along the lines of particular missions that they have in mind. Those would be really nice and um, I hope that they eventually will be able to implement this. But again, it'll probably be a long way off. Are there more factions planned, like other countries? The game will have 10 major nations. The British Empire, the German Empire, the French, the Russians, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the United States, the Empire of Japan, the Italian Empire, the Spanish Empire, and the Chinese Empire. In short, um, all the nations that we currently have in the game. We do not plan to add more playable factions. The first campaign version will only have two playable nations, and will not have land in battles. Um, I'm not exactly sure what they mean with the last sentence, will not have land in battles. Maybe they mean that you don't have to use marines or something like that if you want to take an island. Now, there are two nations planned for the campaign, two playable nations. I imagine that's going to be United States and Japan. Uh, could be the United Kingdom and Germany, but I don't find that particularly likely. My money would be on Japan and the US. How long are you planning porting the game? Excellent question. We consider this project very unique, very special, and we handle it very carefully so that it steadily continues to bring enjoyment to players. For sure, the game is going to be steadily and frequently supported until its full release. And uh, there's a note for myself, you can already see this happening because frequently they release a patch, sometimes a hotfix, where they address issues that have been brought up by players and that immediately can implement or can improve the, the, let's say the health and the quality of life in the game. Um, we are making this game to make a definitive statement on Dreadnoughts for the years to come. Now that is really good to read. I really like that. We are not in a rush. Again. Really good to read. So many devs seem to be in a rush to get their game out, uh, get it shown off to as many players as possible, and then, I don't know, maybe do a cash grab and abandon it. Or, I don't know. It's just sad to see how quickly games can be abandoned these days. And I'm glad to see that the devs from Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts are not like that. Last sentence in that answer. Players will support us, and we will deliver sooner or later. Are you aware with problem or of problems with American towers where they where they are? I think they mean where there are slots, but no weapons fit in them. Uh, we have seen this in a couple of the scenarios that I tried to do, where the American hulls, I think it's the Iowa Tower particularly that they mention. Um, these things have issues, where there is a slot, but I've tried adding two-inch guns, three-inch guns, nothing fits. They say you probably mean the hulls based on the Iowa class. There are some known very minor issues. So yes, they're aware of it, but it's probably not a very high priority, as I think they're more focused on the campaign. Will nations have a specific flavor to them? For example, will American ships have better 5-inch guns? Again, this is going to be a very interesting one. In the campaign, the technology system will be very dynamic and never the same. And this is something I really like, because it means that, at least for me as a content creator, it has a really high replayability value, as every campaign is going to be different. Now, this will not only include the range of bonuses for techs, but also the time to research the techs. 
So you will never be certain that some nations will have specific advantages when you play. Again, I really like that. I don't like a system where, for example, the US always has the best 5-inch guns, Japan always has the best torpedoes, uh, Britain has the best, I don't know, damage control parties, Germany has the best overall tanks. Um, and I don't mean tanks as in vehicles on tracks, but tanky battleships. I like that this is random every time. However, we are considering giving a setting for enabling some historical bonuses based on historical situations. Again, um, they write it as an option. Again, it reminds me of the Hearts of Iron system where you just have a system where you can tick the historical AI or not. And you can have entirely different results. Will it be possible to save replays of battles and share those with the community? Uh, this is a personal or a question that I also really added there to have uh, a sort of personal side benefit. Because for me as a content creator, it would be really, really handy. I could just feature battles which were epic, in your opinion. Um, I mean, I already have 700 plus scenarios, almost 800 today. Um, I probably would be adding a ton more replays to that, but who knows, maybe there will be a website with best replays, much like World of Warships replays or any other such plan uh, platform. And the answer is, we would personally love to make this feature very much. Replays are very complex from a tech perspective and will consume valuable development time that we can use for the campaign. We will address this later. Replays are an extremely valuable debug tool, and after we finish the campaign, we will revisit this question. So this is something that they uh, they have on their radar, but again, as a longer-term project. Personally, I would love to see if they could implement this, because I think it would um, it would be valuable all around. It'd be valuable to them as a debug tool. It would be valuable to the players to see what they did wrong. It'd be valuable to myself, because I could make videos on your epic fights, I think everybody wins if such a system is implemented. But again, only after the complaint. The complaint? Really? The campaign is completed. Uh, next. <clears throat> what, if any, are your plans for extending the game period beyond 1940? The player and his actions will determine the game timeline. So the play can extend beyond 1940, probably. I think the question asked secretly asks about if we are going to have planes and carriers. We don't know. So they're not quite sure about the carriers. Um, we've already addressed this before. And judging by the answer, at least the first part, where it says player and his actions will determine the game timeline, I'm thinking that they mean that the campaign might go on for longer than 1940. Or 1945. So if you don't win enough battles, particularly in a campaign, Maybe that's going to mean that the campaign is just going to last longer. Would you consider making an Ultimate Admiral Modern Warships or something similar? We are laser focused on developing the Dreadnoughts first. Once we fully deliver all of the promises, we can briefly rest and review other options. But we currently believe that Dreadnoughts based multiplayer, or even open world, has a lot more potential than a modern Zumwalt style warships. In case you don't know what the Zumwalt is, it's one of those uh, hyper-modern destroyers from the American Navy. Uh, look up a picture if you haven't seen those already, because they look really peculiar. So, um, short answer. Short term, there is not any plan for building a modern version of Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, but pot or potentially sometime later in the future, which I think they might mean two to three years from now, if that could be even later. Will there be a safe blueprint slash ship design for custom battles? Yes, it is one of the priorities. Real priorities. So I am um, expecting this feature to be coming up maybe this year, hopefully. Because it's something that I would really like. Now, saving the ship designs is one thing. What I would also like to see in this particular game mode is a way to transfer the designs to somebody else. Or for me to export the designs and then give them to something else or to somebody else. Um, I don't see that happening anytime soon <clears throat> because I don't know how the things are saved. And as of right now, there does not seem to be an, an, a sort of export ship design feature, especially since you don't have Steam support 
you'd have to implement or uh, sort of import those things into the game manually, which I think is going to set a lot of people off and or turn it off for a lot of people because they simply don't know how to. Uh, I personally don't know how to, but then again, I've never really looked into it. Um, what is next? Yeah, here. Uh, will there be the possibility to share ship designs, potentially through Steam? We're considering having a central database, which will be useful, which will use successful player designs. Uh, sir, let me start again. We are considering having a central database, which will use successful player design ships for use in AI doctrines. So, the way that they have answered this question is um, yes, with a caveat. In the sense that it might not always be uh, random AI ship designs that you see, but player designs which have proven to be lethal. That could make the game a lot more challenging. Because too often do I see ships which have this exactly, minimum bulkheads. It's always one of the first things that I change on a ship build. And I would love for the AI to actually have more bulkheads than minimum. Far too often do they use this, and far too often does it mean death of a ship very quickly. Um, sharing designs for the campaigns is not going to be useful, as every player will have a unique experience. Sharing designs for custom battles would be possible. So, um, it makes sense, because in the campaign you're always going to have random situations, random results, random text, and that means that sharing ship designs over there wouldn't be very valuable, because your experience from the next guy is going to be different. Um, your buddy could be playing the same campaign, or could be playing the campaign, as the same nation, get different techs, make different choices, and then the ship design simply wouldn't work. So I understand that they're not taking this as a main priority. Will there be a Mac version? There are no plans for a Mac version at this stage. So unfortunately, Mac users, you're going to have to use a Windows platform to play this game. Will there be more calibers? Uh, German 88s, 150, 210 millimeters, British 114 millimeters, Russian 130s, etc. Eventually it could happen, but, and we've seen this one before, only after the campaign core is done and loved by players. That second part of the answer is really important to me because they it shows me that they are really concerned about making this thing fun for players. Because they say they want it to be loved by players. They want this thing to succeed very, very badly. And I think they're definitely listening to the players. Through the forums, um, through maybe what they see in the comment sections. I'm not sure how much they pay attention to those. Because, again, they are a small team. They probably don't have time to watch all the videos and, and read all the comments. That would just be a day job. I mean, it's almost a day job for me to keep up with all the comments and making videos. Let alone for somebody who's actually in a development studio. Will there be an abandoned ship feature? To save crew and officers on a sinking ship in a winning battle? Maybe. This could be a setting for ship captains, a doctrine, where players can allow or decline abandoning ships with all morale bonuses and penalties that come with that. Really interesting. So they're not saying it's not going to be there, um, much like they seemingly have done to some extent with the aircraft carriers. It's like they're considering it. Maybe it's going to make it into the campaign at some point. Which, of course, is going to add a lot of... Well, maybe drama to the campaign. Because if you have that, that one legendary captain on your, I don't know, your battleship, and the battleship is doing poorly and going down, you could either make the choice to have the captain go down with the ship. Or you could go, no, this guy is way too valuable. He's going to just abandon ship and he's going to live to fight another day and I'm going to plunk him over on a different ship. Maybe it's going to work like that. Maybe not. What is going to be the final price of the game? The Steam Early Access price will be $39.99 US dollars. The price could change in the full release, but it is too early to confirm something more specific right now. Okay, so let's say uh, 40 bucks rounded up with one cent, and that's for the early access. It could be more later, but they just don't know. Will there be an armor viewer so you can see what armor you are adjusting? World of Warships has something similar for those of you who play this. The armor viewer and various other ship designer improvements are considered. 
Features will come from both player feedback and our own interests. The armor viewer will greatly improve the perception of the ship designer and we would like to do it very much. We will probably be slow in implementing, but we will do it eventually. So it's pretty much a uh, yes, we'll implement it, but be patient. That's the way that I'm interpreting that answer. Um, and finally, more of a technical question that I asked. Uh, damage saturation issue. Torpedoes and guns do not cause damage on destroyed sections, and will this be fixed? They say, we are aware of this old problem, and it is going to be fixed. What currently happens is that destroyed sections do not spread any damage. Um, and I referenced a video. So as in this video, torpedoes hit multiple times a destroyed section, causing only flooding, while the structure of the ship remains unaffected. For those of you who have seen my video called Kedusha of the Seas, where I hit German battleships with 90 to 200 torpedoes at a time, this is exactly what I would like to see fixed. They are aware of it, they are working on it, and they are working on fixing it. Those were all the answers that I uh, asked and that they answered. A big thank you to the developers of the game for taking the time out of their busy schedules to actually go through all these questions and answer them. And they were not short answers either. They were, I'd say, uh, fairly extensive. And I really appreciate them taking the time and showing such an interest in interacting with our community, which is you guys. You who might be watching this video, who are uh, playing the game potentially, who are interested in the game and who want to see it succeed. I want to see it succeed very much. I think the game has a lot of promise, a lot of potential. And I am very satisfied to see such a, a devoted dev studio behind it. Which is not a lot of games can say. <laughs> or rather, um, maybe the devs are very interested in the game. But then the executives go, nope, push it out the door, make some money and move on to a different game. Anyway, that's all for this Q&A video. Um, maybe I can do something like this again in a couple of months. I don't want to immediately launch another section of questions. Uh, if you have questions, you can, of course, post them down below in the comment section. And uh, who knows, maybe they will get answered at some point, but don't expect an answer anytime soon. Let me know what your thoughts are on all these as answered, uh, sorry, asked on all the questions that were answered by uh, the devs. And if you haven't bought the game yet and you are interested in it, then again, link down below in the description. You can get the game through their website, at least currently, August 25, 2020. And maybe at some point later on through Steam as well, as they are planning a Steam release. For now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the uh, Q&A section. And I shall catch you guys soon for another video.